Hello and welcome to this module 10. We are now going to be looking at, well, sounds familiar, we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing. Now the difference between this module and module 9, if you've been watching some of those videos, is that now we're going to be looking at two populations. So you'll see a lot of similarities uh, in the, the methodology, the process of what we're going to be doing here. The steps in developing the test, in calculating test statistics, and then going to your tables and getting p-values and all this stuff is all entirely the same. Uh, we still have uh, three different types of tests that we'll be doing. I'm going to write these down very quickly. Uh, so we still will formulate the null on the alternative hypotheses. Now we're going to be looking at the difference between two means. And these can either be, again, a lower tail test. We can be doing a two tail test. So we're testing something like this. And of course, what's left is the upper tail test, something like this. Now, a couple of differences that you might see here. First of all, we're looking at the difference between two population means. And so I have in my notation, I've got mu1 and mu2 uh, that differentiate between these two population means. This d0 that you see here, this is our hypothesized difference. So by that I mean, are we testing to see that the difference is 5? That the, aver the difference between this average and this difference is 5. If that's the case, then we can test for that average difference. Is it 15? Is it negative 5? Anything. We can test for any hypothesized difference. If all we are looking for is to see that one is somehow different from the other and we're not looking for any specific magnitude of difference, uh, then this can just take on a value of zero. Okay, so we'll have these three different tests and we'll go through uh, examples of a couple of them. Uh, maybe not all three actually, because one of the things that happens when we run in, or when we start using two, two populations, is that the distinction between a lower tail test and an upper tail test become very trivial. Uh, I can formulate a test uh, as an upper tail test and I can say, do I, I want to see that this population uh, is greater than this population? Or I can formulate it as a lower tail test and say this population is smaller than this population. So it becomes extremely important now uh, in how we choose to define our populations. I've got population one and two, one and two, one and two. The way in which those populations are defined will then determine whether or not we're going to do a lower tail test or an upper tail test. It's a little less important with the two tail test because it's we're just testing for equality, so it's less critical. But you'll see the distinction between upper and lower tail test is, is trivial. We can do either one, and either one may be correct. Um, the other type of test that we'll be doing uh, in this chapter is a little bit different, uh, and it's called the test on the mean difference. And the type of hypotheses that we'll be looking at there will look like this, a mu difference. And again, we can perform this as a lower tail test, as a two tail test, or if I don't run out of room here, uh, mu d less than or equal to some value. And what this is now, this, it will become more clear I think once we get into an exercise, but the difference here is that now we're testing for a mean difference. So these ones are a mean difference or an average difference value, whereas these three up here, oops, what's going on with my eraser? These three tests here, we're testing not a mean difference, but a difference in means. It's a very subtle difference. It has everything to do actually with how the data is collected. Uh, and you'll see when we do these tests on a mean difference that the, the test itself resembles very closely 
uh, a single population test from module 9. So you'll see a lot of similarities there. Okay, so once we've got all of this stuff done, then what we'll be doing, again, is going to be very much the same. Uh, oh, that looks messy. Looks very much the same as uh, our previous tests in chapter 9. We're going to be taking a sample out of some distribution where the null hypothesis is true and that difference is uh, normally distributed. So here this is under the assumption that the null is true and from there we obtain some sample difference and then we standardize it whether we're using the Z distribution or the T distribution we'll go through a few different cases. So we'll standardize that and of course it's relative to the hypothesized difference whatever that might be divided by the standard error and again the formulas you know they they're similar there's some differences in the details but it's still that point estimate right here this is still the point estimate uh, of our difference minus the hypothesized value and this is the same as it was in the numerator for the module 9 single sample uh, tests a point point estimate minus the hypothesized difference and divided by the standard error so these components are still the same and then of course this allows us to compare this to our standard normal distribution and we'll obtain a Z statistic and wouldn't you know it all the rejection rules are going to be exactly the same so we'll be using the p-value rejection rule whether or not that's smaller than or equal to alpha and uh, we'll reject again for the same reasons it has everything to do with our tolerance towards a type 1 error and this p-value being that measure uh, of evidence in favor of or against the null hypothesis so if that p-value is very very small that means that if we if we reject and if the null happens to be true uh, if we reject it's very unlikely that we, we will have committed a type 1 error uh, meaning that uh, that particular sample or that particular test statistic it's very unlikely to have come from that hypothesized distribution probably came from another distribution and so that's why we say a small p-value provides evidence against the null hypotheses and then all of the rejection rules uh, for upper tail tests if this is an upper tail test we would reject if our test statistic is greater than the critical value for a lower tail test we reject if it's less than the critical value and for a two-tailed test let me just scroll see if I can scroll a little bit for a two-tailed test we'll reject if it's greater than the upper uh, critical value or less than or equal to the lower critical value so it gets a little messy down there sorry about that uh, but you see that there's so many similarities that if you've got the process figured out from the single sample tests these two sample tests will be a breeze okay so we'll go through all of these we'll do some tests on means uh, towards the end we'll also do a couple on two sample uh, two population proportions and again you'll see a lot of similarities there so uh, it shouldn't be a very big leap uh, to go from the, the module 9 stuff to the module 10 work Okay, so I hope that's uh, good for a very quick introduction for what we're going to get into. So uh, let's get started on the first problem. Okay, see you soon.